Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 21st, and it is an absolutely beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. A slightly cool, but going to be sunny uh, spring day, so quite happy about that. Got a garden update for you, as you might have guessed from the little bumper there at the front. Uh, I've got my Nirup pipe here today, and the Nirup is full of Old Joe Krantz. I uh, got some of that in this week. I've been craving it, and uh, now I'm smoking it. Yeah, I was a, I was a bad boy in the tobacco purchase department. I got another one of those... Uh, double discounts at pipes and cigars they were having a 15 percent sale and i had a 10 percent coupon and they let me use them both and i didn't really need anything but it might as well get some haunted bookshop in right and then i've, I've been really wanting old joe Krantz, and i've got it in the cellar and i could have just gotten a jar out and i said eh, just buy a pound so now i've got more old joe Krantz. Mm. i really enjoy it I, it's not it's not something I want to smoke all the time. Um, you know, I, I still prefer Honda Bookshop, but as an occasional treat, sort of, it's it's much sweeter. And I love the smell in the bag. It's it's uh, not a pleasant smell, <laughs> but it's it's very unique, and I I just enjoy it. According to Cornell and Deal, and to my palette, um, Old Joe Krantz is basically Haunted Bookshop with more Red Virginia. But a lot of people, um, including our buddy Matches, used to say uh, that it's got more Perique in it. I don't detect the, the additional Perique. I really detect the, the Red Virginia. But that, that, that smell is, it puts me off a bit trying to understand why it smells so different in Haunted Bookshop. Unless it's the fermented Virginias, I, I don't know. Anyway, um, what are we going to talk about today? I, I do want to do a little garden update, but I've got this loose thing running around my head right now about uh, being your own boss. And it, it comes from a couple of things. I, I, w I was having a conversation with uh, my friend Dean by email last week. Uh, hello, Dean. I know you're watching. Um, we were talking about working, you know, how I think I was complaining about my day job and how, how stressful it was in one of the videos. And uh, he was pointing out that he's retired, but he's got all this work he wants to accomplish, uh, and he will accomplish it. And I was thinking, you know, I. I don't want to retire because I'm, I want to go sit in a chair and smoke a pipe. I want to retire because I've got so much stuff I want to do. And I'm going to probably work harder in ter just in terms of manual labor because most of what I do for my, you know, for an income uh, involves talking to people or typing on a computer. But I like working with my hands. And uh, I was thinking about this as I was walking around the garden this morning. and. and I really do like doing things. Like I like making pipe stems. I like uh, restoring pipes. I like making pipes. I've only made a few, but I, I enjoy the process. I like woodworking, uh, all these things. But I've been driven nuts the past couple of months, believe it or not, trying to make a couple of you know, fairly simple corn cob pipe stems. And I'm finally at the point where I think I'm going to get some some stems out of this. So the green one, I got two purple and a green. And every time I talk about this, the guy I'm making these for apologizes. He doesn't need to apologize. It's not his fault. He, he asked me to do something really simple that I've done many, many times. And I have just screwed it up repeatedly. <laughs> so, and I know why now. I understand what I did wrong. And, and that's good because it's always a learning process. But this carries with it a certain amount of self-imposed pressure. I told someone I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it for them. I have to have it done. I, 
I still don't have it done. It bothers me. And I got all these other things I want to do in, in the back of my mind. Uh, I was talking with uh, with my friend Bear Wolf yesterday about a project that I'm really excited about and uh, looking forward to starting, but I can't start it right now because I got other things I got to do. Um, I just want to be my own boss, you know. I just want to be able to get up in the morning and say, "Well, today, this is what I'm going to work on," and I'm going to work. You know, I, I can't I can't stay idle. I can't watch TV. It drives me crazy. You know, I, I spend too much time thinking and, and I just, I need to do things. I need to be physically engaged in something. And it doesn't have to be like digging a ditch. It could be fly tying, you know, which is about as physically demanding as watching TV. <laughs> but I've got to be, I guess I've got to be creating something. I don't know, these, these words get thrown around, you know, creating and makers and craftsmen and all that. I, I just think it's work, you know, it's workmanship. I've talked about that before. But I really enjoy working for myself and not so much for other people. So that's why I think I'm going to cancel my plan of reopening the pipe restoration site at least until retirement because I just don't like that extra pressure it doesn't mean I won't restore pipes or make a stem you know, I might make a batch of cob stems and sell them or something like that, but I'm not going to do them. I'm not, I'm not going to take commissions. I, I just, I don't like it. And I wonder what this would be like for, you know, like artists. Um, you know, if I, 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 I'm not an artist. I can barely draw a straight line. In fact, I can't draw a straight line. But... What it must be like to be somebody that, that's that creative, that, you know, can take paint or pen and ink or whatever and, and, and reproduce what they see or reproduce what they think. And to be told, oh, I want you to paint a portrait of uh, my wife holding her little poofty dog and uh, wearing a big hat with a feather in it. And it has to be done in this room and, you know, make sure you use these colors. And, and that's what you got to do in order to earn the money to go and do what you really want to do. That's a, I don't like that situation. I'm not saying it's bad, and you know I, I appreciate the folks that can do it. It's just I, I don't think I can survive, could survive in, in that kind of a of a position. It would it would it would bug me. So, yeah, it turns out I'm my favorite boss. So, I did a little walk around the garden and uh, took some video of it because I know a lot of you folks are interested in how that's coming along. It's very immature at this stage. You know, we're southeastern, southeastern Pennsylvania is still a little bit cool. In fact, we had a freeze warning the other night, which... Uh, scared my wife. She covered her lettuce, which probably did more damage to it than... Anyway... Let me, let me take you on a little walk around the garden. That didn't work. All right, we'll, we'll click you. So we're gonna do a, gonna do a quick little garden tour here. This is the first raised bed that I built. And you see, it's just made of these uh, fencing timbers. They're pressure treated and all that. And, just uh, kind of lap joint them together. Use some decking screws in the corners, and uh, this design's worked really well for me. So anyway, we got uh, this is the first bed. This is my wife's uh, attempt at growing lettuce. These are I don't think they're lettuce actually. They're, they're they're greens of some sort, field greens, mixed greens, spring. I don't know. That might be lettuce back there. 
Uh, they looked awful when we first put them in, uh, but they seem to be bouncing back, so that's good. Uh, this is two rows of, you, you can't see them because they're still in the ground, underground. <laughs> two rows of watermelon radishes. We'll see what happens there. Here's my, uh, my favorite. These are banana peppers. And I really love banana peppers, so growing, uh, actually there's one right there that you probably won't even be able to see because it's dying. That's the one seed that I got to grow this year. The rest of these are uh, from a local garden center. By the way, everything but the banana peppers is from our uh, our CSA, plant cell. You got two cucumbers here. One and two. And, uh, yeah, that's about it for this bed. The, the, um, the banana peppers are actually a sweet variety, with the exception of the seed, which is a hot one, but probably won't grow. And, uh, yeah, so that's bed number one. And if we come around here, we got two other beds. As you can see, same style. This is a newer one that I built uh, maybe two or three years ago. And the, the fencing is primarily to keep the dogs from playing, because they like to dig. Uh, what we got here, we'll start down at this end. So we got two, uh, these are plum tomatoes. And uh, yeah, in their cages, hopefully ready to perform. These I'm very excited about. These are uh, tomatillos. And I've never tried to grow these before. If you've not had tomatillos uh, or tomatillo sauce, it's delicious. Uh, used in a lot of Mexican food and uh, really enjoy them. So hopefully they will grow. This is a cherry tomato, which uh, when they do well, you get more cherry tomatoes than you'd ever want from a single plant. So we'll go with that. Uh, we'll talk more about the marigolds in a minute. And here we got two rows of arugula that's just starting to, to sprout. And I like the arugula, so glad we got that going. And then if we come around here, this is the last bed. Now this one is not a raised bed. It's just a strip by the fence that I put one row in and then just kind of turned the soil and got it plantable. And these guys are ground cherries. And this is an experiment this year. They grow well in this area, but uh, never tried growing them myself. Again, these are plants from the CSA, and we enjoy getting ground cherries from them every year, and I thought, well, why not give it a try? And then we've got marigolds, and for reasons that are hard to explain, one, <laughs> one banana pepper plant, more marigolds and this right here these guys are called col colus Let's see if I can get that in focus for you uh, two slightly different versions of that and I when I was a kid um, and stayed with my grandparents in the summer they always planted marigolds and plants that look like that that we called St. Joseph's cloak I'm not sure if that's exactly the the same variety but certainly they were these colus or coleus and uh, yes yeah, so I thought well if we're getting marigolds because my wife thinks they're important for pollination and she may be right about that then uh, we should get some St. Joseph's cloak to go along with it so yeah that's the garden so we're going to do a whoops <laughs> I hope that came along in uh... You were able to, to see the garden and enjoyed that little walk around it. Uh, one little story I got to tell you, that, that lone pepper plant in the last bed uh, that was surrounded by the marigolds, uh, it, it was going to go where the marigold in the other garden bed is, that, that lone marigold. And my wife said, oh, we need to pollinate, so <laughs> let me put the marigold there. I said, what am I going to do with this pepper? So she said, well, you can put it in with the marigold. So she's kneeling... Uh, at where she's planting those marigolds because that's her garden the, the long one that's not in a raised bed that's that's really hers and she's putting her marigolds in I had already put the pepper plant in and we got the gates off and, and Isabel my darling Isabel 
comes lumbering over and, and just decides that, oh, Mama's kneeling down there. I guess she wants to pet me and goes and lays right on top of my poor pepper plant. And she wouldn't move. And it was both funny and horrifying. So we finally got her to move. I hope the hope the pepper survives. It probably will. They're they're fairly hardy. Uh, yeah, so that was that was a bit of fun. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, I was chatting a little bit with uh, my friend Steph this morning about this. Uh, I, I, she, she had put pictures on Instagram. This is Steph Kane, uh, from Steph and Skip Kane, Kane fame. Uh, she would put pictures of Instagram on Instagram of her garden, and she's already got cucumbers hanging off vines and stuff. And of course, they're they're in Texas. They've got you know very earlier season than than I do. They've been planted longer and everything. But I saw this right after I made that video, and I I commented to her that you know it's kind of funny. I just was looking at my little seedlings, and here I see you've already got produce. And she said, you know, don't ever compare your garden to anyone else's. What's important is that you grow something. And, uh, or not, you know, and, and that's true. It's it's not, you know, I'm not, I don't need to survive off of that. I'm not a farmer. Uh, thank goodness, I'd be a miserable farmer. Uh, but it's the care that you put into it. It's the, it's the fact that you're working with your hands. It's the fact that you're trying, you're learning. Uh, yeah, it's just a fun thing to do. So get yourself a garden, you know, even if you just got room for a five gallon bucket and some soil and a, a tomato plant, it's, it's a good thing to do. Well, folks, with that, I'm going to go shopping. Yeah, we're doing that pre vacation, got to buy clothes thing and uh, got to keep the wife happy. I'm not my own boss. <laughs> She's the boss. Well, folks, I hope you hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and a gr looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. And I bet you anything, my hotkey doesn't work and I have to lean over there to end the video. But we shall see. Goodbye now.